in this lecture we are going to find how to find the wavelength using the bi uh, fresnel by prism as you are aware that young's double slit experiment is the first experiment who gave the experimental verification for the wave nature of the light but during those days many scientists had doubt about that experiment they thought that the fringes are due to complicated modification of light at the edges and not due to interference to remove this doubt fresnel is the name of the scientist devised series of arrangement to produce the interference and one of such arrangement is by prism which produces two coherent sources by division of wavefront as you are aware that we get the two coherent sources by two methods one is by division of amplitude and another one is division of wavefront in this fresnel by prism experiment you get two coherent sources by division of wavefront as you can see in this diagram this a b c is the fresnel by prism this a b and c is the by prism this by prism consists one obtuse angle of 179 degree and the two acute angle 30 minute each we are calling it by prism because it consists two acute angle prisms with their base in contact so at this point over here this is the first acute angle prism and this is the second acute angle prism these two acute angle prism are placed with their base in contact with each other and it is forming by prism abc which has one obtuse angle 179 degree and two acute angle with 30 minute each in this diagram this s is the source of the light so from this source of the light some rays fall in the upper part let's see these two rays okay so these two rays or you can say the single wavefront incident on this by prism and there are two regions in this case one is the upper region upper half region ab and there is lower half region ac so when light fall on the upper half region for example when this rays fall at this point it bends in this direction and the ray which is falling at this point it bends in this direction so those rays which are falling in upper region of the by prism ab they bends in a certain direction all the rays would be in between these two rays and then they travel towards the screen here is the screen actually our screen is nothing but a microscope m you can see through the microscope m which is mounted on optical bench so at any point you can move the you can move this microscope now the rays which are bending from upper half region ab they bends in this particular direction between these two rays all the rays will be bending in between these two rays and it appears as they are coming from a virtual source s1 this is our actually source s the light which is falling on the upper part of the by prism ab it bends in a such a way that it appears as it is coming from virtual source s1 similarly 
the rays which are falling on the lower part a ac for example this ray over here it bends in this direction and reach on the screen let's say at point e so it bends that way and the another ray which is falling at this point it bends in this direction and let's say it reach at point x similarly the upper region this ray reach at point y let's say this is x this is our x and this one is y so those rays which are falling on the upper part ab they are bending in a such a way that on the screen they will appear between the region x and f between the region x and f so all the rays will be in between x and f and these rays appears as coming from virtual source s1 now the rays which are falling on the lower part they are as i said they are bending in this direction this one bends in this direction and on the screen they will reach between the point y over here and e over here so all the rays all the all the waves which are in the region e and y actually bended from the lower part of the by prism but appears as coming from virtual source let's say s2 so all the light which is in between y and e on the screen appears as coming from virtual source s2 so that is what happens you know the wave front is divided into two wave fronts so as you can see here in this diagram two cones are formed the two cones of light the first cone of light is this x s1 and f x s1 f is the first cone of the light and the second cone of light is this y this point is y here then s2 and e so y s2 e is the another cone of the light so we on the screen we get light from these two cones one cone is x s1 e f and another cone is y s2 e so these two cones of light fall on this screen and the in the region y x or x y these lights interfere and produce the interference fringes so you get interference fringes between the region x and y but it was observed that in this region y f as well as e x some fringes are observed but these fringes in the region y f and e x are due to diffraction we get the interference fringes only in the region x y now in this diagram let's say the distance between these two virtual sources s1 and s2 is small d and distance between source and the screen is small d 
let's say the o is the central point so distance between s2 o and s1 o is same so at point s you will get bright fringe and on either side of this o we will get alternate dark and bright fringes because of interference so you already studied the relation for bright fringe which is xn equals to n lambda t upon small t and for dark fringe it is xn equals to 2n plus 1 lambda t by 2 t you already studied this in i'm not going to repeat that you also found beta is equals to lambda d by t which is the fringe width the fringe width of interference fringes that derivation we are not going to study what is important in this lecture is we have to find wavelength of the given source using the by prism and the equation for wavelength is equals to lambda equals to beta t upon capital t now this beta is the fringe width this fringe width you can measure directly using the microscope here is the microscope which is mounted on optical bench so you can find the fringe width of those interference fringes this capital d is distance between source and screen that also you can measure directly but in this formula there is a small d and small d is as you can see here it is the distance between two virtual sources s1 and s2 and that d that this small d we cannot measure directly so if you want to measure this if you want to find wavelength lambda we have to measure this small d the distance between the two virtual sources and to find it we have to place one lens between prism and screen between by prism and screen we have to place a converging lens that converging lens will form we have to place in between somewhere here a converging lens and that lens will form real images of the virtual source s1 and s2 on the screen which you can see using the eyepiece of the microscope so our main aim in this case is we have to find small d now for that small d i have shown here another diagram in this case as you can see here this is the lens let's say l1 is introduced between the by prism and the screen actually there is no screen we can use directly microscope to see the images or to measure the fringe width now what happens this l1 is a convex lens with a short focal length and it is placed between the by prism and the screen as you can see if this is a by prism and this is a screen and this lens l1 is placed in between what we have to do you have to adjust the position of the by prism position of this lens as well as the position of the screen such that you will see the real image of the virtual source s1 and s2 in the microscope 
So let's say we have adjusted the position of by prism lens L1 and print such that at this point over here you can see the image of S2, the real image of virtual source S2 you can see over here. Then move your microscope at this position and at this position you will see the real image of virtual source S1. Then the distance between this position and this position. At this position we get real images of the virtual source. Then this distance you can measure over here. The distance between these two points where you get the real images of the virtual source. And let's say that one is D1. At that point the distance between source and the lens here is u1 as shown over here and the distance between the lens and screen is v1 as shown over here then using the magnification formula you can write this distance d1 divided by d the distance between the virtual sources and d1 is distance between the real images of the virtual source then using the magnification formula you can write d1 by d is equals to this v1 by u1 and let's say that is our equation number one. So the first position of the lens is over here. And from that we get this relation T1 by T is equal to V1 by U1. Then we have to fix the position of biprism and the lens. The position of these two biprism and lens is fixed. And lens is moved to some other location which would be closer to the screen now you have to adjust the position of this lens let's say l1 prime is the position of lens second position of the lens such that you will see again real images of the virtual source on the screen. Then you can move your microscope over here and at this point you will see real image of virtual source S2 and similarly at this point you will see a real image of virtual source S1. Then this distance you can measure and let's say that one is D2. Then again we have to use magnification formula. In that magnification formula you can write D2 by D. Okay, that time again we have to note down this over here. Now the position of lens from the source is at a distance U2. And position of the lens from the screen is V2. This one is D2 and this is D. Then using the magnification formula again we can write this equation D2 by D is equals to this V2 by U2. But as you can see from the figure this V2 is nothing but U1 and this v2 is equal to actually u1 so u2 is equals to this u2 is equals to v1 and v2 is equals to u1 so we can write instead of v2 here we have written 
q1 here and u2 is equals to v1. So d2 by d is equals to u1 by v1. This is our equation 2. Then let us compare equation 1 with equation 2. So from equation 1 and 2, we can write d1 by d is equals to not this, we have to write d by d2. So we get d by d2, therefore d square equals to d1 d2 or d is equals to square root of d1 d2. Then use this equation lambda equals to beta, small d is square root of d1 d2 divided by d and you can find the wavelength. So this is the one method by uh, from which we can find small d, the distance between the two virtual sources. There is one more method and that method is called the deviation method. From this method also we can find small d. Now here in this diagram here is the source S and these two rays are given here. At this point it bends and travels in this direction. And this angle is called delta. That is the deviation angle. Similarly, this is also a deviation angle delta. And therefore, this is the deviation angle here. This is also deviation angle. Here is the source S1 over here, here is the source S2 and let us assume that the distance between the source and the biprism is equal to A. Then you can find this is delta over here and tan delta then is equal to See tan delta is equals to d by 2a. This tan delta is equals to d by 2a. If you know that delta is small, so we can write delta is equals to d by 2a. But we have the equation. This equation we already have. This delta equals to mu minus 1 into alpha, where mu is the refractive index of the prism and alpha is acute angle of the prism which is in the radian. This equation you already studied, the delta is equals to mu minus 1 into alpha. So we will substitute this in this equation and you get then d by 2a equals to mu minus 1 into alpha or d is equals to 2a mu minus 1 alpha. So using this equation you can find this small t where A is distance between the source and the biprism, R mu is the refractive index, alpha is the acute angle in the radian.